we have anything in the United States of America, we should have the right to education. How else are we supposed to uh, rise up above our station, pull ourselves up by our bootstraps? Not that that's really happening these days, but if we eliminate the right of education, the subjugation of people in the United States can then begin wholeheartedly. And that's dark, disturbing, and in my opinion, evil. Today, more than ever before, education is playing an important role in the teaching of children. The school has become a vital part of every community. Drawing children Failure of the education system in the United States is nothing new. But in September of 2011, it was announced that effective the following January, the entire public school district in Kansas City, Missouri, would lose its accreditation. The district has been given two years to resolve the problem before the district is dissolved. But even during an election year, we aren't hearing public education take the priority it demands if this and other districts are going to survive in the future. Uh, my name is Kevin Stan. Uh, I'm 31 years old, and um, I live in St. Joseph, Missouri. I graduated uh, from Northwest University in Kirkland, Washington for my undergraduate, and I got my certification on my master's at Northwest University in Missouri. I think the, the key thing is that, that the Department of Education can look at overall policies that can encourage our kids to be more competitive globally. And, um, uh, and I think our, the fact that our nation <clears throat> has children who are not competitive on a global basis, particularly in math and science, is a real concern. Within days of officially losing accreditation, Kansas City Public Schools have been called some of the worst in the nation by the country's top education official. Well, it's about to be a school of hard knocks for the Kansas City, Missouri School District. Now, the Missouri Board of Education voted unanimously today to strip the district of its accreditation, and it only has two years to turn that status around. Amy? For a school district to lose its accreditation is, I, I, personally, I think it's unfathomable. It, it means that something has failed. It has failed for a very long time. We're talking about probably more than three or four years that it's been failing. And the turnover that we've had in the administration that we've had in Kansas City um, has been kind of staggering. And with each new flavor that comes in, there's a new attempt on how we're going to try and solve the problem. Unfortunately, no one's been able to do it. And so what that says to me is that the problem isn't just hiring the right teachers or firing the right teachers. The problem isn't just having the right administrator. Uh, it's a systemic problem within society, and the roots can't just be analyzed by what is going wrong in the school. Well, I think the federal, federal government can play an important role in education, although I think education funding and education policies primarily reside and should reside at the local and state level. When we look at the interaction of the federal government and state government uh, in education, I feel there's a serious problem, and that is once you politicize education, once you, you try to create a silver bullet that's going to save the problems in the United States, you do a huge disservice and you undermine everything that states have been trying to do to their diverse population. The truth is that the federal government works really well on some levels in taking care of the country. In other ways, it's, it does a terrible job. With education, having, um, having a one-size-fits-all a one approach to education, which is what No Child Left Behind has been, has ruined our schools. And it's made the lives of teachers miserable. I, I think if we're really going to solve and crack this nut, of the education problem in America. We've got to, to, to do some things to, to help repair and, and, and bring parents back into the scene. Don't, the, the idea that at, at a certain age you sort of drop your kids off and you're done with this and it's now somebody else's job is, is the cancer that, that is killing the education system in this country in my opinion. Being in an election year now and seeing these issues only just now coming up just represents the lack of political interest in the education system. Um, it's, a, it's a slow ticking time bomb. There is national concern about where we're going. There is national concern about how we are failing our children. But as with many things in politics, until it becomes an on the brink issue, uh, it's not gonna be resolved. And so my fear is that we're gonna hear sound bites about what we're gonna do to education and how we're gonna overhaul education 
which will not be well informed, uh, will be more politically motivated, more emotionally motivated for to to receive votes and is ultimately going to make the system worse than it is now. I know that we care very deeply about excellence in, in school uh, performance. That we should have a, an educational system that serves the customer of the education system. And of course, the customer of the education system is the parent. I mean, you, you could, for example, go through every bureaucracy of education with a very simple test. Are you affecting children or not? Everybody who's not gets to go find a new career. You have a right to your life and you have a right to your property, but you don't have a, a, a an education isn't a right. Ron Paul's idea to, to get rid of the education, the Department of Education is, I think, extremely naive. And his desire to step away from the government funding loans for people to go to college is similarly naive. Um, it's very important that when we decide to reform or change things, we not take an extremist ap approach. Extremism and um, perfect ideology. So the idea of um, let's get government completely out of how, what the states are doing for education is misguided. Um, I do believe that we need reform. We do need to analyze the problem. The federal government should be involved, but to a limited degree. The fallout from removing student loans and access to college for the poor people in society, heck, even middle class now, um, will have dramatic effects on how the United States can compete on the global scene. And I mean, you're talking about the whole system just basically falling apart if you were to do something like that overnight. Last week, the United States saw the overnight takeover of Jason Russell and his organization, Invisible Children. With a 30-minute video, Russell and his team turned the African warlord Joseph Kony into a household name. The video was made to rally support for the U.S. efforts to apprehend Kony and put a stop to his use of child soldiers. But while all this is going on overseas, we are seeing our own children losing the access to the education promised to them. Uh, one of the things I think that we've seen and this is not just with the Kony 2012 um, viral video that's kind of happened overnight, is that it's very, very difficult to predict what can go viral, what, what is on the pulse of the people of the United States of America. Um, so one wonders, why is it easier for people in the United States to focus on uh, people in Uganda or people in Zaire? I, I think perhaps is we don't want to look in the mirror. And the less that we look in the mirror, the less we're going to see things that really disturb us. It's easy for us to project over across the ocean, you know, a $2 bracelet, or, you know, I like this on Facebook to try and prove a point. Um, it becomes strictly anecdotal, and the support becomes token. In the United States, we can't do that. There is no bracelet that's gonna raise awareness for education and our crumbling system because it's happening everywhere. We are aware of it. We've been aware of it for a very, very long time and we've been trying to do something about it. What are you doing? I was just going... Going to what? Throw the eraser, I suppose. It's a good thing I caught you. I'll make an example out of you. But I... That's enough out of you. So in an educational climate like the one we are seeing in the United States today, one where our education system has fallen far behind the global standard, one might ask why anyone would submit themselves to it. I became a teacher, not because I wanted to get rich, although that is the joke, that you become a teacher to make money. Um, and I am oftentimes offended at this idea that teachers need to have an incentive to work, so you need to either have a carrot or you need to have a stick. Teachers teach because they are passionate about kids, because they love children, because they want them to succeed. We need to get politicians out of our decisions. We need to get power back into the schools. We need, we need administrators to be able to administrate. We need teachers that are good to be able to climb. Um, but we can't do that with increasing oversight and increasing red tape and the solution, adding paperwork will not make education better. It will take valuable time out of the classroom that a teacher could be spending teaching kids and relating to children. And that's, that's the end of that.